Okay, so what I want to go over now is a very powerful optimization technique. It comes in two parts. One is over the current technique, which is LOD, which stands for level of detail. And the second one, I will just showcase you Nanite. So the reason why I'm so focused on LODs is because Nanite is specific to Unreal Engine. But if you want to use any other engine or any other workflow in the world right now, pretty, I think, of course, I can know. There can be like engines that have that functionality that do not... Uh, show it to the public but in any case those engines will use LOD which is level of detail now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this uh, concrete barrier over here that we got let's turn off UVs now what is level of detail level of detail basically means that it will reduce the triangles based upon how close you are away from it right now what you can see up here is you can see that the triangles are 9000 and the vertices are 5000 no matter what distance I have this is of course quite expensive, but it does not need to be this expensive here. If I go to my wireframe, see, so this is quite an expensive mesh. Now inside of Unreal Engine, you have a very powerful automated LOD tool. So what we can do is if we go ahead and we go to our LOD settings over here, we can choose a LOD group. Now with this group, it will basically dictate how many level of details it will create and um, the distances for them. But of course, this is stuff that we can all later on manually change. So let's say that this is a large prop. I can select large prop and then it says, do you want to override? And you can press yes. Now what will happen is it will generate LODs. If you go over here now in your LODs, you can see that you have LOD 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now let's just cycle through them. 0 is our original mesh. 1, as you can see, is half the, is half the amount of triangles. 2 is uh, three quarters of the amount and three is even is like uh, only 10 percent of the triangles you can see that very little actually changes between these assets especially if i would drag on like the texture so if i would like drag on this material which you can just go click and drag it on here it would be even less of a showcase here let me just uh, go over here so here you can see zero one two and three so with almost no visual change you are able to um, greatly optimize your mesh now i now have set it to auto what you will see is if i zoom out you can see the triangles change see but because i am so far away from the asset it is not something that is noticeable you can even go over here you can go to lit uh, optimization or sorry level of detail coloration Mesh LOD coloration. And you can see that it's red, green, blue. So you can see when it is starts to, when it keeps switching around. So that's another way to like decide for like the distance. If, for example, you want to go ahead and you want to change the distance by hand, what you can do is you can go ahead and in your LOD settings turn off auto compute LOD distances. When you do that, it will show you the screen size. The way that this works is you can go ahead and you can set this to, for example, zero and screen size to be one. That's fine. But then if you go to one, you can see that the screen size is 0 0.5. And you can see now when that it zooms out and when that it switches. But if I, for example, set this to 0 0.7, I should be able to, or actually, sorry, I need to set it lower, 0 0.2. I should be able to change my screen size. Um... One second, let's go 0 0.1. Oh yeah, so it's very sensitive. So zero, if I go screen size, 0 0.2. And then in LLD2, I would do 0. Point, it's a bit tricky to 0 0.1. Oh, and then of course I need to go to LLD Auto. So now you can see that it takes longer for my level of detail to zoom in and out. So that's the only thing that I always forget. So 1. 0.2 so you can see like how long that takes to then zoom that out and if i do this one 0 0.05 for example and lod 3 0 0.02 for example if i then set to auto you can see that i can control the distances see i can wait very long before it goes and the screen size is basically how large your model is on your entire screen so that's basically what it is looking at so that's the way that you can change your lod's over here now, next to this, of course, you can also choose the number of LODs. Right now we have four. 
But you can of course say, oh, oh this asset doesn't need as much. Let's set this to three. And you can press apply. Yeah, I'm just going to turn on auto compute again. And now you can see it has just removed one LED. But you can of course also go crazy and go for like way more if you want. Now next to this, in your LEDs, you can also choose the optimization amount. What I can say is LED0 has no optimization. That makes sense. But then if I go to LED1, what I can do is in LED1 in the tab, I can go down here and I can choose the optimization amount. Right now it optimizes it by 50%. If I have any problems, I can for example set this to 80% and I can press apply changes. Now what you will see is that the optimization over here has changed. See, it used to be 4000 triangles, now it's only now it's 7000. I can also of course also set this way lower. If I set this to um, 5% for example, you will see that the asset will most likely, you know, it changed a lot, but we only have 400 triangles. So you can mess around with it and set it as high as you want. However, the defaults are often totally fine to work with. So now that you know all of this, now what I want to do is I just want to showcase Nanite. And for this, I have another version of Unreal Engine open, which is the actual demo that is from Unreal Engine, which is this massive demo. And the goal for this demo is to, of course, also show the power of Nanite. So as you can see, um, this... All this geometry, it's a lot, but we are still running very smoothly. Even with two engines open, we are still running 30 FPS. However, when I go closer, you will actually be able to see that this, these meshes, they are incredibly detailed here. And they have like an incredibly amount of geometry. It sometimes takes a while for the textures to load in. But just in general, they have like a lot of geometry in them. Here, see, if I go up close, you can see how much geometry there is in. And it just takes a second for it to load in, like, all the textures, because we are in engine. But if I, for example, would go to my wireframe. Oh, sorry, um, it's Nanite. Nanite does not work with wireframe. Uh, if I go to my preview settings, you can see, you are able to see it. If you go from lit to your Nanite visualization, now you have an overview. But you can, for example, look at the triangles. Now, this is a very overwhelming view. But the goal is that you can see this. When something is up close, it has a lot of triangles. But when it is further away, the triangles become very large. See? Over here. And that's the same goal over here. I don't know if I can mimic it. I will try. Here, see? You can see that the triangles become larger and larger and larger. So it is very similar to LODs. But it is more uh, like based in real time. That's how I should say it. And that's basically the goal of Nanite. As I said before, if you want to import a mesh with Nanite. So here you have like a big overview. If you want to import a mesh with Nanite, I showed you in the import settings, you just simply click Nanite and it will just add it to the system. So here you can see like the clusters, the triangles, the instances. So yeah, you can see a lot of different settings over here. And that's basically the goal of like Nanite. Also this scene, it's just really cool to play around with. This scene is also for um, like the, uh, to showcase like the lumen. Which uh, is great because you can really see it in like these areas. Yeah, these areas are, like very nice to just show like the lumen and just show the overall um, lighting and everything. And it's just looking very cool and everything. And of course, you can always, if you want, mess around with this. And for example, like move some stuff around and just see how all of the movement works. And this way you can play around with actual triple A assets. So this scene, I will not really go over it. It's not really part of this tutorial course. Uh, but I would definitely recommend you to just have like a quick look. Also, if you, for example, want to have a look at characters. Or if you want to go ahead and have like a look at like actual fire, which is also looking very nice and realistic. So that was it for our level of details. What we will cover in the next chapter is we will go over some more advanced materials. Like using displacement in our materials, using cutouts in our materials and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and continue with that in our next chapter.